Is CrowdStrike finally a buy? We've seen CrowdStrike stock absolutely tumble. And as of now, it should be no surprise to why. So Mike and I are going to talk about that. Then we're going to break down, or we're going to jump into the CrowdStrike uh, stock uh, chart, I guess. You know, words are hard. Uh, we're going to talk about is it a buy? I, I think, uh, like I said, I think I'm buying it today. But, uh, okay, Mike, explain just, just what happened in general. Yeah, so CrowdStrike on, was it Thursday night, uh, pushed out an update to their software, which caused Windows machines to crash and basically turned them into a brick. So between, I forget what the actual time, there was like an hour or two when they were pushing this update. They pushed it out, bricked a bunch of machines. I've seen numbers into the hundreds of millions of machines. Yeah. And... Uh, it's caused all kinds of disruptions, airlines, 911 service, hospitals, um, you name it. Every industry was affected because CrowdStrike is integrated into most companies. Yeah. What? Half? If not a little over half? It, I, don't know if, I don't know if they have half the market share, but they have a large market share. Um, okay. yeah, it's, I, it, they're, they're entwined with everything. It was weird seeing pictures of at airports, just blue screens of death. Just Yeah. Uh, across all monitors and then 911 calls being down that that has to be horrible uh, yeah yeah hospitals were down i mean government offices were down like i know i heard uh dmv offices i couldn't process you know new licenses like it was it was a whole mess not a single person noticed that at the dmv <laughs> <laughs> you still had to wait in line just as long <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's right that's right uh, okay, it's an absolute disaster. So it's it's done now, right? We got it all fixed. Everything's for the most part. They did come out with a fix, um, and you could do a restore and get your your machines back. Um, it just took time, right? So I know. Mm -hmm. So I personally work in the IT security space, and we worked all day Friday, part of Saturday, part of Sunday, um, and finally got our users who were affected. Uh, pretty much operational by yesterday afternoon. Wow. Well, I mean, good that you guys got it back up, but that is, that is some time down considering, I mean, I'm just gonna say time, time is money. We live in it a is. tech world and just businesses are not operational, not, not fully yeah. functional. Uh, what an absolute yeah. cluster. I, I would, I would say this is probably the biggest IT disaster in my lifetime. So, now, obviously, the stock crashed off of that, and that's why I think a lot of people might be here. Um, we uh, hiccup in the road. We done. We if, if it's back up and running, it, I mean, certainly CrowdStrike. We'd like to hope is not going to do this again. Maybe we fixed what happened. Uh, uh, not I'm, what I'm, happened, but make sure it's not going to happen again. Yeah, they have learned from their mistake. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so <laughs> is, this, is this just a screaming buy at this point? I mean, if you liked it before. What are you thinking right now? So let me say this. They are still the best at what they do. Mm -hmm. I still like the, I still like the company. I know they really messed up, but I know they're, they have learned from it and this probably will not happen again. Um, the question is, is it a buy now? And what's, I don't, I don't know what the drop it's dropped. I don't know. 30, 30, 40%. We're gonna something like that. There's a Las Vegas ball. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what the stock looks like an absolute meltdown so we'll go yeah. from peak to now uh we dropped 35 percent, a little over 35 percent, from 398 to, to 258 uh holding now stalling uh and, and what i talked about was uh you know if i because there's a couple people that were in this and this just Gap down, wrecked, and destroyed. So if you had to stop loss in place, you liked it because the trend up, everything was just fine and dandy. It might have you might have just woke up to a bad morning. Uh, and this is where I've been saying, like, all right, since we got that bounce, maybe we chill for a little bit and uh and, and see if this is done. Now I've talked about just litigation because I think the the problem is done, but that's that's the problem. I guess there's there's the healing process now after that. Uh, what comes with it? Uh, you know, uh, maybe cause and effect, uh, action, reaction. I, there's, a, there's a saying there, uh, I'm sure. Um, but I, do we sweep this under the rug or is there any uh, recourse to this? 
So that's the question, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the event is over. Now comes the litigation. Um, and I guarantee 100% there, there is going to be some sort of litigation against CrowdStrike. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how well their contract is put together to um, identify them. Mm-hmm. Because most most tech companies do have some identification from their um, issues with their software, right? Because it is software; it's it's prone to bugs and issues, and they can't be held responsible for everything. However, this was such a huge event. I do wonder if if they are going to have to pay out something um, to their customers. Hmm. I'm a customer. I was affected. How much are they going to pay? <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> Um, I would like to think, I mean, this, uh, being in the tech space, you think they have something, you know, some kind of barrier from this. This is like somebody losing their money on Robin Hood and trying to sue Robin Hood over. It's kind of what I, what I feel like. Yeah. Um, and, and then I guess to this point, let's say you are one of the companies that are affected. Who's CrowdStrike's competition? Who do they turn to? Like, hey, you burnt this bridge. We're, we're going here now. Yeah, so there's there's Sentinel One, which is pretty good, mm-hmm. um, and there's a few others, right? the The question is, are they going to lose customers because of this, or is it going to just be harder to acquire new customers? I think that's the other part of this. So future growth impact, right? Right, because um, people will be a little a little wary when signing up for a new uh, cybersecurity platform for their endpoints. It's kind of like buying refurbished stuff. Are you a fan of that or no? Mm, not so much. I had a big uh, friend that was a big fan of it, and I and I was I'm in your boat. I was like, mm, kind of seems smudged, you know. Like I, I don't know. I like to peel the plastic off the glass. Uh, but a, <laughs> yeah. a friend of mine was a guy in the tech. I forget what he used to refurbish tablets and, and laptops. And uh, he said, oh, I buy refurbished all the time. He goes because oftentimes when they break it down, they find little things that are probably going to be a problem later and fix it while they're in there. So he says, that's better than new. Hmm. And, and I've never seen it from that angle. So I'm curious as a sales pitch for, for CrowdStrike, like, no, we found it. We found the problem. We're now more bulletproof than ever because we've seen this. The other companies might not have it because, yeah. you know, I guess with scars come experience, is that going to be, I think more people sit in the boat of that should have happened in the first place. Uh, like I said, their their product, the product itself, mm-hmm. and what it, and what it's designed to do, is probably the best out there. So that hasn't changed. The underlying product has not changed at all, right? It's still mm-hmm. the best software to keep your endpoints pr- protected. Again, it's, it's do they lose customers for it, or is it just harder? I I, I don't think they're going to lose customers. Okay, I think they're just going to be a little harder to sell. So I think the growth might slow a little bit mm. short term. A year from now, no one will, no one will remember this. Yeah. People don't know what they had for breakfast three days ago. No. So in my mind, this is a buy mm-hmm. at least starting it. Cause it could potentially go down for, if I was, in, if I was investing in long term, which I am, mm-hmm. I think this is where I'd start nibbling at it yeah and so i will say let's just bring up pure just technical analysis uh one we did put in a lower low so that's a full-blown reversal if we really zoom out that's what a reversal looks like uh if you i hate when people say play it safe the safer one would be you wait for it to pop up now it, it maybe it bounces off this yellow zone so we jump up we hit this yellow zone we pull back to this zone and then reverse. So we have that higher low in place. At least now we're kind of back on the uptrend. I think if, if I were not prone to risk or maybe I wanted to really keep it light, and that's probably what I would wait for because that higher low might be right here at 297. We might push to 320, pull back to 300. You're buying it at 300. Uh, it also might just be we melt this thing down to 230, pushes up to 260, pulls back to 250, and that's your higher low. Uh, you know, so by, by doing that, at least ultimately you're not the, you're not the only buyer on there. I am a little bit more, I like to front run the risk. Uh, I know what I'm getting, you know, uh, 
you, you jump on the train track. So I think I am buying this right now. I'm adding on. It is in the investment portfolio. It is one of my AI plays. Uh, but I think I am adding on right here. Okay. Uh, I originally bought it back here. So it, it's actually still higher than where I originally bought it. By a good margin. Yeah. Uh, so it'll still bring my average up. Um. Yeah, but I, I think I am going to. We, we, we've chilled out enough that I think... The, I think the bears might be done because we see companies, I, I bring up litigation all the time. And then that sounds really shocking to a lot of people because they just probably haven't been in courts that much. Um, but Elon gets sued all the time. It's someone's always suing companies. Uh, so it, it's it, it, what would really affect this. I think in the future, why I'm not too worried about it being sued, why I've talked about it because you just know what's coming. Why I'm not that worried about it is because there's, uh, there's settlement. There's just a bunch of chop around that. And, and, and unless they come out and say, shut this company down, <laughs> it's a detriment to the company. Then uh, I think we'll, we'll see some hiccups in the road and, and, and that'll be it. But we're kind of, uh, I think the worst is over. Yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't, one, no one's going to shut them down. The worst mm-hmm. that's going to happen is, you know, they'll pay some fine, a slap on mm-hmm. the wrist, maybe some, uh, payback on contracts that they had, or is, discounts on or discounts on future contracts. Like, I know that's what I'm going to be pushing for in my next contract with them. Um, mm. So, is is Pelosi in this? Because I feel like that <laughs> is a lot cheaper. Like, <laughs> we're going to talk about millions to a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> you know, I have no idea if she's in this. <laughs> if Pelosi's in this, then you know that fine. That slap on the wrist is probably going to be covered over a lunch break or like a coffee like i'll right. get your coffee it's probably 200 dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. absolutely absolutely uh, much better yeah so uh, i'm with you i think it's a buy you, you, are you buying right now you're gonna wait for a higher low no I, I i think like i said i'm gonna buy a little bit um mm-hmm. and start my dollar cost average because i did I, I missed the opportunity when you got in mm-hmm. um so i think this is my opportunity if it goes down i'll average down but at least i'll be in and I can always mm-hmm. average up. Yeah. CrowdStrike for me has been such a weird one because all the other tickers I am much more active on. I bought this because it dropped down on earnings. And I was like, man, I'm going to buy it. And uh, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> well, it hit a zone, right? So that's, you know, yeah. that's how I do it. Like, all right, buy. And then I bought it 10 minutes later. I was up and it just never looked back. So I was like, and then I never touched it. <laughs> that, that's it. So I'm, I added on, like, I think once, once, maybe twice. Someone's going to call me out in the video because they're going to say, like, what about the time you bought here? Like, I, I did. You know, it's not even anywhere close to where it's at right now. It's It's been nothing but up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think I'm going to do that again. I'm going to chunk some more in. It's been one of the easiest ones because I just bought it. And it's just been green the whole time. Even now, it's still green. <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah. I'm just going to buy more and call it a day until something else happens. Yeah. Uh, it, this one's kind of a weird one for me because everything else I could probably – tell you the movements daily. I mean, I trade it, you know, which we're swing trading it. So when I'm swing trading something I'm investing in, I obviously know quite a bit more. Uh, but this one's just been like uh, the good kid, you know, it just it doesn't <laughs> require a bunch of babysitting or just, just grabbing it and calling it good. Did you glance uh, at it? Still green? Yeah, All right. yeah. Go on your way. And it's like the kid I've left at home for a while, you know, does good, does his homework, does everything, doesn't stick a fork in the toaster. And then, like, <laughs> one day he, he forgot a fork and he microwaved it. <laughs> you know, like, saw some sparks. I'm like, don't do that again, okay? <laughs> uh, and, then, and then we're right back right back onto it. Uh, you that's know, a, I'm back a, to do my a, thing. That's a perfect analogy, too. <laughs> <laughs> don't stick your fork in the microwave, okay? Yeah. <laughs> that's all. Uh, fun fact, before we wrap it up here. Uh, did you know Pop-Tart wrappers are made of metal? Yes. There's two times I've seen a microwave spark. One, it was because I had a bowl. It was like a China, not, not from China, but you know, like anti China had like the metal lacing. Metal in it. rim. Yeah, I didn't know that was real. Anyway, yeah. like, I got microwaving something and it just starts lighting up. I'm like, oh, holy cow. So I stopped that. Like, that yeah. was cool. Uh, <laughs> and then, like, coincidentally, I mean, not even a week later, someone's convincing me I need to microwave a Pop Tart because I, I guess I'm just weird because I eat the Pop Tarts cold. I don't toast them, I don't do anything. So I was like, no, I'll throw it in the microwave. Like, whatever. So I do it. Same thing. The little foil wrapper starts lighting this microwave up. I'm like, you're trying to kill me. 
this is an assassination attempt. And, and, like, how in the world did I almost blow up a microwave inside of one week with two separate things? Uh, you you disturbed me with cold pop tarts. Why? That's just uh, that's just wrong. You that's open the wrapper and you eat it. That's just bad and wrong. <laughs> no, I, it's called being functional. I'm moving <laughs> on. You gotta like prep your a pop tart is garbage. There's nothing but empty calories, and now you're wasting time to prepare it. Oh, you still no. have to warm it up. No, you open it up. And you oh, typically you bite it, you, you rip it in half to so get to the good stuff because the crust is just like filler, you know. It's like annoying. I can't talk to you. <laughs> that's, that's how it's done. That's it. Uh, okay, there is one thing we got to start talking about more and more uh, because it does show up in the comments and people are asking. It's the Patreon because they, they, they hear me come on here and say like, "Oh, if you're on the Patreon, you saw this." Uh, we do need to start doing a better job of bringing it up. So, like me, Kevin, we're going to bring it up every 30 seconds from now on. <laughs> Just kidding. There's no expiring coupon code. Uh, but we will do a better job of talking about it because that is where Mike goes live Monday, Wednesday, Friday with his warm Pop Tarts. And uh, I go live every night before the stock market opens the next day. Uh, anyway, all of that is in the Patreon. And so you have all of our. All of our plays, you have access to all of this. So if you're learning the wheel strategy, you've seen us talk about that, you want to know where I'm buying CrowdStrike outside of a YouTube video, uh, the Tesla plays. There was, I don't know if you caught it the other day, I, I bought Serve. Now, I bought Serve pre-market, and, and it's one NVIDIA's in, and it shoots up like a dollar something. It's an $8 ticker. Shoots up to 9 I sell it. Sells back off to like seven sixty. I buy it back in, <laughs> and it shoots up. It was like I was playing Market Maker. Uh, it was it was absolutely hilarious. One of those things that you're just not going to repeat, but just coincidentally, yeah. Uh, yeah if you want to see all of that, I, I do encourage everybody to to check out that Patreon link. Uh, like I said, if, if you're learning, you want to borrow from our experience while you learn. That's the place to do it. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there's there's a lot going on in the in the Discord. There's a lot going on in our in our uh, private sessions. So yeah, it's it's a good it's a good value. Yeah, and and, and that's what it is, right? So the Discord. The Patreon is access to that Discord and everything. Uh, all right. Any uh, any final words other than that? What's your favorite Pop Tart? Oh, if you say something probably, boring, I'm in the stream right now. It's probably cherry. Cherry. Mm, all right. It's not not the worst. I think cinnamon <laughs> the worst. Cinnamon, like like cinnamon Pop Tarts. They just look like a one giant thing of crust. There's no filling in there, basically. I, when, I, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I used to like the the fudge ones. Wait, the like the naked with just like the little swirl on top. No, no, they were they were like they had like fudge in them instead of any like a fruit filling. Okay, I think there's there's fudge now, and like you know, like the uh, the frosting covers up the pop tart. But yeah. There's fudge ones now where there's just nothing on the crust, one giant piece of crust, and like oh. they just swirled it on top no 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 these this used to have it was a dark it was like a dark crust so it was like a chocolate crust with fudge filling with fudge icing and sugar crystals on top of it okay okay never mind i know what you're talking about they still have those those are amazing you ever just tried one eating out of the wrapper <laughs> no. <laughs> no it's not a 15 minute course it, you just open <laughs> open the box open the wrapper and eat it no nah, man there's i've got some rules Got some hard and fast rules. What? Gotta like, don't buy meta and warm up your Pop Tarts? What? Oh, Lordy. Just know That's that if you join the Patreon, I'm in there. So if you find Mike's tactics questionable, uh, maybe you don't spend 30 minutes warming up a Pop Tart. Oh. Know, that, know that I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> We're going to wrap it up here. Right. Uh, see you guys all in the next one. Have a good one. See you.